Everyone on the live stream, welcome to Timucua. Uh, the show will start in just about uh, six, seven minutes. Thank you for your patience.
Hello everyone, hello online people in the world. Thank you for coming here and thank you for watching at home. My name is Benoit Glazard. I am the artistic director of the Tinkwa Arts Foundation. And uh, I'm so glad that this is happening tonight. So first of all, let me attract your attention to uh, the art that's on the wall. Uh, up to Thursday, we only had four pieces, but uh, Jaime made us a fifth one uh, during the masterclass we had on Thursday. So Jaime Parra is our artist for March 2021. Um, this is the fifth uh, artist in residence project that we have. And it is the first that we have an audience for the final performance because of course it was pandemic and we're slowly starting to open up more and more. Uh, and so uh, what happened is these uh, three artists who I'm, I'm gonna introduce very soon, they met, uh, online a little bit before, but they met in person for the first time on Thursday. Uh, we did this little uh, brainstorming session, uh, which I call the process. And then we did a masterclass, which was very unique and interesting. I thought it was a, a big success, personally. Um, it was very interesting. So uh, stay tuned for the next ones. Uh, and But in the meantime, tonight is the final performance of what the project that they came up with to offer to you. And uh, this is something that would not have seen the light of day without this uh, residency. 
uh, ours are very short interdisciplinary re residency projects, uh, intensive, you may say, uh, and the goal is to create something uh, which involves uh, more than one discipline. Uh, again, that would not have happened otherwise without, and we try to, um, you know, uh, pair people up like uh, that, you know, maybe th like we, f we hope that they're just going to work well. Uh, it's always kind of like a, it's a tough thing to, to, to work on, but you know, in this case, I knew that this was going to be a success. Um, so let me introduce the other, like, let me introduce everybody. So p please come in the light so we can see you. Jaime Parra. Uh, <laughs> so Jaime has a, a long and complicated history, but let's just say that he came to the arts uh, late in life, and uh, not that he's old, uh, he's not old. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> my hair looks very white in this light, I know that. <laughs> so, but uh, but he, he did the, he, he's a dentist, and then he works in the health uh, field, but he also is an amazing artist, as you can see, and uh, you'll see what he's gonna try to do to, tonight. So basically, um, the, the, the hope is that all three uh, uh, disciplines will kind of meld into one and project, and that's the nice thing about it. So, Joaquina Shi is a beautiful writer <laughs> and poet. And uh, so she has a few books out, so she's gonna basically, um, well, I don't think I should tell what's th about to happen. I just want you to know what the intent was and everything, and I want you to experience it for the first time yourself the way it's gonna happen. Hey, Jalen Baker is our vibraphonist, so he's our musician. <laughs> it is Jalen's uh, fourth appearance at Timucua. He came with his group twice, and before that he came with Ulysses Owens. Ulysses is playing here in a few weeks, uh, just in a couple of weeks, by the way. Okay. Um, but so stay in touch with our, our, our um, uh, schedule. But again, like I said, the, this project is part of a new series that we started in August last year, uh, and it's called Artists in Residence, and again, it's, it, it's uh, the, the goal, our goal has always been to integrate art forms uh, and integrate the experience, uh, you know, from the performer side and the audience side, to integrate all of that into one unique, beautiful, magical experience, and we hope that tonight will be exactly that. So, without further ado, <laughs> like I say, air, before Artists in Residence, air number five. Not a rhetorical question. Who are you? They told me I wasn't good enough. I lost my shadow, searching for the light in your darkness. I drowned in you and couldn't find a way out. Your energy was one to consume leaving little room for the sun to remind the earth that I'm here. Being sober is overrated. The damage done by my vices almost seemed worth it. When staring in the face of my demons, I wish to escape. But running to what kills me doesn't kill my demons. It only locks myself in a closet so that I can hide and pretend if only for a moment that this monster doesn't exist. I have decided to just lie when people ask how I am. Nothing inside of me has been resting. My spirit twitches with angst. My soul paces the floor in worry. My mind flies through vices. My hands reach for something, anything besides this. I want to be anywhere but here. The problem is I have been trying to escape for so long. I don't even remember what I'm running from. What is it that troubles me?
they told me, but who are they that tell me this? Perhaps my own insecurities, perhaps the evil spirit that lurks in this world. They are not attached to singular people. They are a force that doesn't wish for me to know who I truly am because I am made in the image of God himself. I am a walking divine entity and I could partner with God to create the Garden of Eden. I know what they say, but what does God say? Why does the cage seem so enticing to a free man? Why does the path of liberation feel so foreign to his feet? Whom the sun sets free is truly free indeed, but what do I do now? I often long for this moment, but I guess I never thought about what happens next. The door swings open, the light breaks the silence, the noose around my neck is severed, and now I'm free. It takes me a moment, though, to register what just happened. Then a sudden joy embraces me as the tears of excitement wash me clean. I jump, I shout, I talk about it. I'm happy, but I haven't stepped out of the prison yet. I just stand in amazement that I now have the ability to leave. So I start to tell people about it. I scream from inside the cage that I am free. Look at me. My future is open and the possibilities are endless. God has come and he has kept his promises. But I don't step foot out of what has now become a torturous zone of comfort because what is outside of the cage? I dream it would contain a world beyond anything I have ever seen where I could hold my head high where I could defeat the enemy's attacks, where the weapons would not prosper, where my nightmares didn't keep me awake at night, where the demons no longer call me by my name, where my light could shine, where I could be everything God said I was, a girl I never met before. And now as I stare at the mirror and see a stranger gazing back, I'm afraid. This woman looks jubilant, fearless, at peace with who she is and where she is going, but I do not know her. I remember the girl with fear in her eyes as the darkness slowly emptied her lungs until she could no longer take a breath without killing a part of herself. She was ugly, but she was familiar. I knew her, I was her, and I was comfortable. I always dreamed of wearing a crown, but now it seems too heavy to remain on my head. The jewels scratch my scalp. The glare of the sun hitting the gold blinds anyone that looks my way, so I don't have a lot of friends. People seem to love the idea of me, but lack the enthusiasm to actually talk to me. I'm not sure I like this. I mean, I love this. Please don't take it away. It's just, I don't know what to do with it. It's something I've never experienced before. Mostly everyone I've known my entire life are watching me peer from the open door of my cage. And I can't help but to feel guilty as they have to watch me behind bars that hold them captive. The people I love are suffering. Maybe I should pretend we are still the same. I mean, maybe. No, I must leave before the door closes, before the darkness drowns me. The light coming in isn't as bright as it was before. And I can't lose a moment to step into a world of only faith were real. No sights, just hopes. Whom the sun sets free is truly free indeed, but why do my eyes wander back to the cage? Why does my gaze drift back to my confinement while standing in green pastures? The water is still, but my habits are convulsing. I don't have to do it, but it feels weird not to behave as if I still have chains around my wrists. It feels strange to roam freely and no longer be bound by shackles. I always believed we were meant to be limitless, but I must confess, I'm scared. The journey to freedom is scary. The path of healing can be lonely. Sometimes the comfort zone built in the brokenness tempts me to run back, but I must continue forward. In the beginning, there was chaos, and God's spirit hovered over the chaos. In the beginning, there was chaos, a dark void of nothing, and God's spirit 
hovered over the chaotic nothingness. In the beginning, there was God, there was chaos, and there was an opportunity for God to respond, and he did. In the beginning, there was God, there was a chaotic mass of nothing, and God's response was to create. Let there be light. So in the beginning of a new chapter in my life, when presented with nothing and chaos, I will create.
everybody and give it up for Jalen Baker again. <laughs> Hi everyone, I am Joaquina She. I'm a poet and a public speaker in the Orlando area. I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia. I've been writing since I was, yay Atlanta. <laughs> I've been writing since I was six years old. Um, so that would be 26 years now. I'm terrible at mental math. Um, and I have no official training in writing. It's just something that I'm really passionate about. And I'm really passionate about healing and I'm really passionate about healing women and just making sure that we can all just live the best life that we can because there's a lot of things that everyone's just battling on a consistent basis, you know what I mean? So that's what inspires me to write. Um, I basically just write from my own personal story. Writing is how I interpret the world. It's how, it's how everything makes sense to me. Um, and it's how I communicate with the world as well. So, without further ado. <laughs> I have to unlearn everything that loving you taught me. I have to stop compromising what I want. I have to let you go now. I have to love myself now. I have to hold hands with God now and run towards the sun now because I've spent too many nights staring at the moon and darkness is not my home. I have to live in the light now. I have to walk in self-discovery now. I have to be loved now because you weren't offering me that, just compromise. I went to war with myself because of you. Not just you, but you, you, and you as well. A collective you. To everyone who asked me to question myself, treated me like I wasn't enough when the root of us not working out belonged to you. In the form of every insecurity that my presence brought to light, you cringed when I climbed a new mountain. You clapped for me through secret comparisons. I thought I wasn't enough. Turns out I was always too much. Turns out you thought you weren't enough. And instead of admitting this, your ego pointed the blame at me, but this poem isn't about you. It is a huge apology to myself. Girl, I blamed you. I criticized you. I painted you with their words, not knowing it was the wrong color. I tried to mold you in their shadow because their image was too large. They didn't want an equal. They wanted submission through a partner who would always need them. But you don't need anybody. Tell them why. Because every time you needed a man, you went without, so you learned to go get it for yourself. Good for the people who need a crutch, but you are your own entity. You bring the whole table to the table, and I'm sorry for ever questioning that. Because I know who you are. I know who I am. I am Joaquina She, daughter of the Most High. My name means God shall establish, and my identity is the beloved one. And I will no longer downgrade or play pretend to be less than for anyone else's ego, so I am great. That statement is not rooted in arrogance, but in self-awareness, I am great. That statement is a chubby middle finger to anybody who makes a joke of strong, independent women, I am great. Did they not know the most successful kingdom had a woman at the head? I am great. I am a giver of life, love, and determination. I am practical steps towards an impractical dream. I am something you never ex experienced before, exceeding every expectation. I am flawed, but my flaws didn't drive them away. My greatness did. And the knowledge of that gives me peace. Because I mean, think about it. What if Beyonce would have dated Lil Bow Wow instead of Jay-Z? A man so entangled in his own success, he could only get with a partner that matched his fly, that matched his ambition, that matched his bank account. Jay-Z helped Beyonce level up. Meanwhile, I'm creating internal wars over men who want me to remain stuck. Wow, <laughs> perspective as a mother because I just realized how grossly unattractive you are. I've never seen a confidence so low, so ugly before, that they will idolize a woman with potential she will never, ever reach. Baby boy, that ain't me. Thank you. There it goes. There it goes. How's everybody doing? Give it up for Joaquina again. Thank you. 
incredible, right? <laughs> and Jaime, who's over here working really hard, <laughs> is taking shape. So um, like Ben Wall said, this is my fourth time here, and it's always such an honor and a privilege to play in someone's living room. Never thought I'd say that. Usually turn those types of gigs down. <laughs> Unless it looks like this. this is, give it up for uh, Tamukwa. This is incredible. Right. So um, like we said before, we met on Thursday. Um, we had exchanged emails, but I guess we really got to connect on Thursday. And we um, sat down and we came up with some ideas, um, some text from her book that I wanted to put some loose music to where I could improvise, but also kind of stay within the bounds of something so I don't mess her up, right? So um, I think it's coming out pretty good so far. And thank you. So the first few things that, that were heard were from her book, and then I played something solo by myself, which was a Stevie Wonder tune. Cool points to anybody who knows what it's called. No wonder why it gets cool points today. <laughs> uh, Love's in Need of Love from, uh, I always forget the name of the album. Yes, yeah, Songs in the Key of Life. So, <laughs> only the most popular album of all time, right? But um, you'll never forget it now. And I, w I wanted to play that song, because anytime I come to Orlando, I pass by the, the, the Post nightclub, right? Um, which is always an incredibly gross reminder of what goes on in uh, in the world, but very specifically in this country with the injustice that a lot of people face. So I try and make it a point to play something that honors people who've lost their lives. And recently, um, I think six or eight Asian women were slaughtered in a massage parlor or something like that. And that's just unacceptable, right? So anytime I play, that's kind of where my inspiration comes, uh, comes from. And I love to play music that honors people who have, lives have been taken away for no reason, right? Because they have more to give. So I'm going to play one more thing, and then we're going to do some more stuff together. And I just want everybody to keep in mind um, some of the things that some of us, probably everybody in this room, have had to face at some point or another. Guess I got a long press it to turn it off, too. <laughs> Thank you. 
how he gets his stretch on. (laughs) (laughs) I forgot to mention to you guys earlier that I have two published books on Amazon that's available for purchase. I'm reading from the second one. It's called Royalty. Um, Royalty goes through my journey of finding my identity. And it's just about how we interact with our world is a direct reflection of who we believe ourselves to be. So in the beginning, there was a lot of sad, dark poetry because I didn't know who I was. My sense of self-worth was very low and I just accepted whatever was given to me. And that led to a lot of toxicity. It led to a lot of pain. It led to a lot of heartbreak. But as I began to uncover like who I am and my true identity and how I should be interacting with the world, what should be my standard, that's when everything started to get a little better. So it's just been a little journey. So thank you guys for going on the journey with me. And let's let's go ahead. (laughs) And this is my love letter to myself. Walking in my glory, believing every syllable God utters about me. I am beautiful. There is an entire universe within me Not everyone will see, but even if no one notices, I will continue to walk in my light, which is nothing but a reflection of the sun's light. To the black girls who consider suicide, please keep going. One day you will hurt a little less, then another day will come in which you don't hurt at all. But right now the pain seems unbearable, almost like it won't end because you have been suffering for so long you cannot remember when it started. But if it's one thing I am certain of, there will come a day in which you won't hurt as much. Then there will come a day when you don't hurt at all. And I pray between now and then, you take the time to learn who you are. That knowledge will be the only thing that sustains your pending healing. Everything we do is a reflection of who we believe ourselves to be. So again, I will ask, who are you?
Yes. So this thir- it was Thursday. We got to work with an incredible. May I take my jacket off? I hate playing in jackets. It's like it's throwing me off. When I was in college, my professors would throw a fit if people didn't wear jackets to uh, school. So I guess I've been like bred to think that I have to do that. So, <laughs> um, but it's a nice one. I guess that's cool. But um, so on Thursday, we got to work with an incredible group of students from UCF and a couple of non-artists. Maybe they were artists. I can't remember. Um, but they weren't musicians. And some of the things we did were getting people to uh, improvise and just spur the moment try and tell a story regardless of what that story was and we the audience would have to be able to tell on some level what they were what the I guess the feeling or the inspiration was behind what they were playing and they all did really well it was a lot of fun and one of the exercises that Joaquina had a few of them do was throw out a topic and then somebody had to make a poem for it right and I will just say I have the best poem out of everyone. <laughs> I didn't actually, I didn't try it. I was hoping nobody looked my way because I don't, I don't, I'm, that's not my thing. But I, I find it fun to get the audience involved in shows like this that are so intimate where I, can, I feel like I can kind of reach everyone and I see all the faces. And so what we're gonna do now is you guys are gonna get to suggest a topic for Joaquina for a poem, and I will accompany her, and we'll, we'll see what comes, out, what, what comes out of that. So let's get some ideas going. We'll take more than one, too. We'll make this really fun and awkward. <laughs> we got self-love. Let's get another one, too. Self-loathing and self-love. Oh, Lake Eola. With the black swans. I've never seen a black swan until yesterday. Shout out to the black swans. So we, we're doing self-love, self-loathing, and Lake Eola. Let's see what happens. <laughs> I'm going to let you start playing. For sure. Right. Self-love, self-loathing. What does a lake sound like? transition. Maybe I'm just in the process. Maybe I'm getting there. Maybe I'm almost there. Maybe I'm not so bad. I just have to trust that the things that I want are going to manifest, are going to materialize. I have to trust that I didn't cry all of those tears in vain, that I didn't say those prayers to no one. I have to trust that it's all worth it, that every rejection, that every failure, that every setback is really pushing me towards where I want to be. So instead of sitting in my apartment in self-loathing, I'll go take a walk. I'll go see some swans. Because I mean, what's the rush? Why can't I relax? 
Why can't I play? Why can't I have fun? Why can't I look at all the strangers passing by? Do I have to work all the time? Don't I deserve to play? I don't have to earn rest. So sometimes doing nothing is an act of self-love. That's what I got. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, give me some more topics. I want something like silly, crazy, random. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, llamas. <laughs> Anything else? Surfing. So we just said surfing. Lam okay. All right, All right. that's going to be fun connecting those topics. Okay. Well, roller coaster. Thank you <laughs> for making it more complicated. <laughs> okay, llamas surfing roller coasters. Okay. 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 Do llamas gallop? Does anybody know? I've never seen a llama. Yes, they do. They do. There we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> bunch of random craziness. <laughs> I started on this farm and I saw these animals. They had long necks. They were tall like me. So I went up to them and I tried to pet one, but it bit me. Ouch. This llama bit me. That's okay. So in my dream, I just kept walking. Just kept walking. Because why dwell in what's toxic, right? So I just kept going. Then I started to see some water. I could hear the ocean. Yeah, the roaring of the waves back and forth, calling to me. I don't know, something in this dream, man. It just made me go to the ocean. And I can't swim, y'all. I'm terrified of water. But in my dream, none of that mattered. I saw a surfboard and I just started to do it like it was natural. Like I was born to just surf in these waves. Like I was born to face my fears and not be limited by anything. It was such a freeing experience. I was just riding the waves up and down, up and down. And I knew I was dreaming because I closed my eyes, just feeling the waves take me up and down, up and down. And then when I opened my eyes, I was on a roller coaster, going up and down. The wind was blowing, it was blowing. I don't have any hair to blow in the wind, but the wind was blowing. <laughs> and I felt so free. And I smiled. And when I woke up, I sat with it, because I believe all dreams have meaning. She's like, man, that was fun, but what did it mean? I think sometimes when we experience pain, it 
forces us to step outside of our comfort zone in order to heal. It forces us to face all of our fears, to look in the mirror, to run towards things that we had avoided. And in the midst of that, we'll find our joy, we'll find our passion. In the midst of that, we'll live again. talk about a llama, so it was enlightening. I'm going to sit with that one for a while. So um, we've been having a great time. Give it up for Joaquina She, Joaquina She, and Jaime. Still working, still trucking at it. So thank you to everyone that came out. Thank you to everyone who works here. Thank you to Van Wah for once again setting uh, this event up and also um, whatever it, it is that we're in. Shout out to, uh, to his wife for allowing him to do this. That's the real hero uh, amongst us. <laughs> so we're gonna do one more Joaquina's from her book, I believe, and then we're gonna let you guys go. <laughs> Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> Where can they find your book? You can find my book on Amazon. If you type in Joaquina She, I guarantee you I will be the only one that pops up. <laughs> Might need to spell it. <laughs> so that's spelled J-U-A-Q-U-I-N-A, She, normally. Once again, that's J-U-A-Q-U-I-N-A, She, as a normal. And you'll see both of my books. My first book is She, a poetic memoir. My second book is Royalty. Okay. I will love again. I will be loved by a man. He will look at me with stars in his eyes. He will be mature enough and emotionally intelligent enough to recognize and understand that I am worth sacrifice. I am worth pursuit. I deserve good things. I deserve to smile will love again and he will love me he will respect me and my feelings he will love me he will call me beautiful and believe it he will not tear me down no he will be great the love we share will be great we will be great we will be a reflection of God's love to everyone. I will love again. I will be loved. I will be pursued. I will be loved and pursued. Not only will I be loved by one man, I will receive love from all of creation. Everything around me will be in harmony with God's plan for my life. I will heal, I will love myself, I will experience community, I will experience healthy family bonds, I will love, and I will be loved by what and who God has for me. This is not acceptance from all mankind, but from who I am destined to share a tribe with. Yes. Not only will I love, I will be loved. Thank you.